Hi, my name is Blake Lemoyne, and today we're going to talk about some very basic questions about artificial intelligence. What is AI? And what's the difference between weak AI and strong AI? The broad definition of artificial intelligence simply takes the raw meaning of the words. It's an artifact, something created by humans, that has some kind of intelligent properties required to do some kind of task. So by that definition, programs like Siri, devices like the Xbox Connect, and large-scale systems like air traffic control could all reasonably be called artificial intelligence. They all require intelligence to do their job well, and as far as I know, they were all created by humans. But that's not really what most people have in mind when they hear artificial intelligence. Usually, they're either thinking of something like Star Trek's Commander Data, or something like the Terminator. Star Trek's Commander Data is an example of what's traditionally known as strong artificial intelligence, whereas Siri and the Xbox Connect are examples of what is traditionally known as weak artificial intelligence. Now, those terms have fallen somewhat out of favor since the term weak artificial intelligence is a little bit misleading since so-called weak artificial intelligence has already had pretty massive impact on the world. Uh, the terms that are coming up to replace them are artificial narrow intelligence instead of weak artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence instead of strong artificial intelligence. But weak AI and strong AI are way easier to say and a little bit easier to process. So I'll be using those terms throughout these videos. I just wanted to make sure you would know what someone's talking about if you hear them say artificial narrow intelligence or artificial general intelligence. Basically, weak AI, strong AI. Now, to expand on our earlier definition of AI, Weak AI is a program that can do a particular intelligent thing, whereas strong AI is something that has the general property of intelligence, allowing it to do pretty much all of the things that a human can do, which we call intelligent. The key difference between weak AI and strong AI is that weak AI is brittle. Strong AI is robust. Now what is robustness? Other than a really fun word to say, robustness. Well, in computer programs, robustness is the ability to tolerate errors in the data. In people, it's the ability to overcome adversity. For artificial intelligence, the difference between a brittle program and a robust program is somewhere in between those two. I'd like to focus in right now on three problems that a robust system would be able to handle reasonably well, but might completely break a brittle system. The first of these problems is noise in the data. Now a robust system will be able to separate out signal from noise. People can do this very easily. Whether it's talking in a noisy club, or driving in the rain, or listening and taking notes in class while you have a hangover, people are very good at processing successfully even if the input data stream is corrupted somewhat. Another common type of problem is gaps in the data. There are an infinite number of scenarios that can happen, and we can't generate them all for training. This is another problem that humans handle quite well. For example, you've only ever seen a tiny fraction of all of the cats and dogs in the world, but the likelihood that you would misidentify a dog as a cat or vice versa, is approximately zero. If we want artificial intelligence to learn new things in a reasonable amount of time, it'll need to share this property. It'll need to be able to handle gaps in the data. Finally, strong AI will need to be able to handle maliciously false data. 
Now, what do I mean by maliciously false data? Well, to put it more simply, I mean lies. Now, of the three types of errors in the data that I've mentioned so far, this is the one that humans handle least well, although we do get it right most of the time. When people are taken in by liars, it's usually because the liar has successfully identified flaws in the operating system and designed data specifically to exploit those flaws. Now, strong AI will need to be able to tell when some other intelligent entity is intentionally designing false data for the purpose of tricking it. Otherwise, our AI is going to quickly acquire lots of beachfront property in Arizona. Now, it's important to stress that these aren't specific features that might be developed. These are broad, general properties which we'll need to hold of massive systems in order for strong AI to be robust. Also, this is not an exhaustive list of all of the things which might contribute to a system becoming intelligent. It will certainly need many, many more things. These are just a few properties that I thought it was worth spending some time right at the beginning highlighting because they're going to be relevant later when we get to some of the bigger questions. Um, now, so what is intelligence? That is not one of the questions we'll be trying to answer here at all. There's a word, it's called intelligence. We use it. You use it, I use it, humans use it. We generally know what we mean when we're saying it. A lot of computer scientists who are way smarter than I am wasted a lot of time about 70 years ago arguing over what intelligence is in order to figure out whether or not computers could be it. Now, it was kind of short-circuited when one person made the observation that even if we can't ever define what is intelligence, we might still be able to recognize intelligence when we see it. And that's what the topic of the next video is going to be. Alan Turing and the Turing Test. Until then, I'm Blake Lemoyne. Have fun. Go create something.